guys, welcome back to Urban Rhino Tutorials. On this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to make multi-loop beaded earrings. Um, so in order to do this, um, this is a very long project, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it is not that it's difficult, it's just very time consuming. So I have a lot of seed beads here. Um, ignore the fact that some of them are a little mixed up, we get a little crazy here. And I need needed to have as well several crimp beads. So let me kind of explain what you're going to be doing. Um, you will need fishing line or beading wire. We always use fishing line just because it's strong and it's cheap and it's easy to use. So, um, and what I did is went through and cut several sections of fishing line that are anywhere between six to eight inches long. And I did 20 of those. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with these beaded sections, um, which I will show you. So I've got a few here done just to kind of give you an idea. You would gather them together, and I'm doing you know, obviously two of each so that my earrings match. And I wanted to have 10 loops per earring. So um, what will happen at the end is all your loops will be gathered together like this. They will fit inside of this cone or bead cap or cone, whatever you choose to use. And then the ear wire will be at the top. So you'll have all of these different colored loops hanging out of the cone. So um, the first step is obviously making all of these beaded sections. Um, so I went through, cut, like I said, 20 of these sections, somewhere between six to eight inches. I like my earrings longer, so I wanted these to be longer. You could do shorter. And you could certainly do fewer than 10 loops per earring if you want. Um, so if you're gonna use 10 loops per earring, you need to have 40 crimp beads. Or if you are comfortable using crimp beads, you could certainly crimp multiple pieces of fishing line together um, to kind of save on that, that's up to you. Because my students do this project, it is easier to explain and it's less confusing for them to crimp each strand separately. So um, in order to crimp these, you will take your crimp bead, put it on the end of one of your strands. So just slip it on, take the end of the fishing line and go back through the crimp bead. So it makes a loop. And then you're going to, um, you want the, the crimp bead to be near the end of the loop. So that way the little loop that you're creating is fairly small, about a quarter of an inch. And then take your pliers and crimp the crimp bead like that. Okay, You can kind of trim off some of the extra. Most of it will be hidden in the bead cone. Okay, so we've got that. And then what I did was I went through and did that for all of my pieces. So all 20 of them, went through and started them by just crimping the end. That way they're all ready to go. Um, and then from there, you would begin putting your beads on. So however many beads you want to go on there. So again, just like these, and I have different lengths. Um, and as you put your beads on, which I'm not gonna sit here um, forever and show you because it's pretty obvious how to put beads on fishing line, but um, as you put them on, you wanna think about when you're making your second set of these that your colors, the, the each color on each earring is the same length. So for instance, my black and white strand I have two of them that are the exact same length. That way when they're hanging on the earrings, your earrings will still look like they are a pair and um, that they match. So I'm just gonna put some of these on. I'm not gonna complete it just because um, I'm not gonna make you watch me put a billion little beads on. But let's say that that was long enough. It's not, but just for instance, if that was long enough. Um, and I'm ready to put my crimp bead on the other end. Then what I would do is put the bead on, the crimp bead on, and then you're gonna go back through it just like you did to start it. And you're gonna pull it 
so that you end up again with a little tiny loop and then crimp it. And again, I realize that this is a very small <laughs> strand. I'm just showing you an example of how you finish off the end. Um, so realistically, and then you would trim off the end. Realistically, it's going to look like this when it's finished. Here's one, we've got the yellow and the kind of fuchsia color like that. So there's a loop on each side and they're crimped so that the pieces don't stay, um, don't fall off. And then I went through and started doing um, a, a match for each color. So I'm gonna finish these up so that I have 10 for each side, so 20 total strands. So you'll see 10 different types um, of these strands. And when I return, I'm gonna show you how to assemble them all and attach them into the cone. So now that I have all of my strands finished, and remember I made a duplicate set of these, so another set that are the exact same as these, same color, same length. These here vary in size, so like you can see my pink strand is shorter than the black and white one and so on. That way they hang from the cone at different lengths. So the loops will be varying sizes. I had originally selected these cones, um, but I just realized as I was starting to assemble the, the first earring that these don't quite cover all of my crimp beads and loops enough. So I actually switched it to a longer cone like this. And it's totally up to you. You could do these, especially if you are someone who's comfortable with crimping or an experienced jewelry maker and you want to crimp several of your fishing line pieces together. But the problem becomes if you try to use one of these shorter ones, when you have multiple crimp beads, they sometimes some will kind of stick out and you don't want that. The goal is to get them all covered. So what we're gonna do is we are going to attach these all to some wire. Uh, let's see here, so I've got some 20 gauge wire. I'm just gonna cut off about three or four inches is all you need. I'm going to make a loop using my round nose pliers and I'm gonna make it pretty large. Um, so I'm gonna go about two thirds of the way down on my round nose pliers here. So I'm making a loop just like that. I'm gonna open up that loop a little bit so that I can start sliding these on. And what I'm gonna do is in no particular order, I'm going to just hook them on like this. And I'm only putting one end on right now. <clears throat> So one of the loops, and then I will go back and hook them over or loop them over and hook on the other side. Okay, so all of those are on. Now all of those are on. And I'm just gonna start pulling them over again kind of randomly. You don't wanna get them like too twisted around. So if it looks like one belongs kind of behind another loop, you know, you can kind of adjust it as you go. Again, in no particular order. Hooking these all on. And then what I will end up doing is closing up this loop completely. I'm gonna kind of pinch it closed um, so it's a little smash so it's not quite so wide if that makes sense um and then there we go and then we'll put the bead cone on so pliers i'm going to close it up and then i'm also going to give it a little little bit of a pinch to kind of close it a little smaller so from here i'm going to put on my, remember I selected this longer bead cone. You still need a kind of a wide opening so that it covers all of your loops. Now, if you were only doing, let's say, um, you know, two or three loops, which you could certainly do, you could choose a cone that is much smaller. So I'm gonna slide this on. I'm gonna pull it down gently so that it covers 
all of the crimp beads. That's the goal, is I don't wanna see any of those. Okay, so now that that's into place, and you can take your pliers and kind of pull it a little bit if you need. So just like that, and you can see it's made everything, you know, kind of gather together. I'm going to trim this down so that I have a little more than a half an inch. I want a bigger loop for these. And I'm going to make a loop at the top. Make it a little, let me scoot down and make it just a little larger. There we go, like that. And if you need to adjust it so that it's a little more centered over your cone, you can, like I'm doing. Okay, so now that I have that, all I need to do is attach my ear wire on. So I wanna decide which side I want to be the front of my earrings. Um, that side or that side, completely up to you. I'm going to do this side only because um, when I show you my second one, it kind of looks a little more like that, that one, like the colors that are showing more. So I'm going to do it this way. And that's the way that I want to make sure I hook on my ear wire. So that's the, the side that will face to the front. And yes, these are big earrings. I would call these statement earrings. So they could vary significantly in size. Um, you know, you can definitely um, make them more subtle by choosing, you know, colors that would go together better. Um, so not go together get to better, but like colors that would be a little more monochromatic. So if you wanted to do like the light pink and a blush and maybe a rose gold, something like that, that would be really pretty, and only do a few loops, they're gonna be a lot more simple. These are, like I said, big statement earrings, which, like myself, some people really like those. So, um, definitely a time-consuming project, like I said. It's not difficult, it's just very time-consuming to put all of the beads and crimp each strand. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, but if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah.